we are about to introduce one of the most important ideas in mathematics in today's Wrath of Math lesson, the idea of the limit of a sequence. In a previous lesson, we introduced sequences with some notation and vocabulary. I'll leave a link to that lesson in the description if you're interested. We're mostly interested in infinite sequences. For example, this sequence a n, where the nth term is given by the expression 1 over n. And perhaps the most important question we can ask about an infinite sequence is what happens as n goes to infinity? As in, what's the long-term behavior of this sequence? Do its values approach a particular number or not? For this sequence, we can just think about that question, or we could try plugging in some large values for n. For example, the 1,000th value of the sequence is 1 over 1,000. And if we plug in more large values for n, we'll see that the values of the sequence get very, very close to zero. And in fact, zero is the limit of this sequence. As n goes to infinity, the values of the sequence get arbitrarily close to zero. And we'll give a formal definition of what that means shortly. So if a sequence gets arbitrarily close to some real number, that number is called the limit of the sequence. And we can say that the sequence is convergent, or that the sequence converges to its limit. So in this case, our sequence converges to zero. If an infinite sequence doesn't have a limit, like this sequence here, where the nth value is just equal to n, it doesn't have a limit, so it is called a divergent sequence. Remember I said a convergent sequence gets arbitrarily close to its limit. And that is the defining factor of a limit. If a sequence gets arbitrarily close to some number, that number is called the limit. So what the heck does arbitrarily close mean? We'll look at the formal definition in just a minute, but put simply, it just means you could give me a number as small as you want, like 1 over 100, for example, pretty small number. Then, if like in this example, our sequence approaches zero, I can guarantee that every value of the sequence after a certain point is within 1 one-hundredth of the limit, the limit being zero in this case. So, continuing this example, if you provide me the small number 1 over 100, I might say the 100th value of this sequence is 1 over 100, and thus has a distance of 1 over 100 from zero, which I claim is the limit. And then every value of the sequence a n, after a100 is even closer to zero. So the sequence's distance from zero is less than one over 100 for every value of n that's greater than 100. So again, the point is you could provide a number as small as you want, and I can guarantee that at some point in the sequence, in this case for all values of n greater than 100, the distance between the values of the sequence and its limit is less than the small number you provided. It gets arbitrarily close to the limit. You can think of the small number as a sort of tolerance. And for any given tolerance, the distance between the values of a convergent sequence and its limit will eventually be within that tolerance level. So the values of a convergent sequence get arbitrarily close to its limit. Now let's take a look at the formal definition. A sequence a n has the limit l, and we write the limit of a n as n approaches infinity is equal to l, or a n approaches l as n approaches infinity. If for every epsilon greater than zero, this is the small number, the tolerance, there exists an integer n such that if little n is greater than big N, the distance between the values of the sequence and its limit for all values of the sequence after the point big N, that distance is less than the tolerance epsilon. Remember that distance is a non-negative measure, which is why we have the absolute value bars. You may notice that this definition doesn't necessarily give us an easy way to find the limit of a sequence. Thankfully, for sequences like this, for example, that have a nice expression telling us what each value of the sequence is, we can just plug in large values for n and see if the values of the sequence are getting closer to any particular number. And if we're pretty sure what the limit of a sequence is, we can use this wonderful definition to prove it, which we'll see an example of at the end of the lesson. 
This definition is just saying the same sort of stuff we were saying a couple minutes ago, but let's explain it once more with the language that we were previously using. We say that a sequence an has the limit l if, given any small epsilon value, any small positive number close to zero, there exists an integer big N which we can kind of think of as a point in the sequence after which, for all little n greater than big N, every value of the sequence after that point is within a distance epsilon from its limit. And typically, the smaller epsilon is, the closer it is to zero, the greater of an n value we will need. We'll have to go further along in the sequence in order to get sufficiently close to the limit. And remember that big N is just a positive integer. It's not literally a point in the sequence, but it does have a corresponding nth term in the sequence. And every following term in the sequence should be within a distance of epsilon from the limit. In the example above, we went over how this was true for a particular value of epsilon, 1 over 100. We explained that for all values of the sequence a n, where n is greater than 100, the distance from the sequence and its limit 0 is less than 1 over 100. However, to prove that a certain number is the limit of a sequence, we need to prove that for every value of epsilon, there exists a corresponding integer big N such that this inequality will hold. So it's not sufficient to show that the inequality holds for a specific epsilon value like 1 over 100. In a proof, we need to let epsilon be an arbitrary, fixed, positive number. One thing I'll point out in this definition, some texts will have a different inequality here. Instead of having little n greater than big N, they'll have little n greater than or equal to big N. It's not a huge difference, but definitely something to be aware of. In our previous example, our inequality would hold whenever n was greater than 100, but not when n was equal to 100. Now let's quickly take a look at a picture that I definitely think helps illustrate this definition. On this graph, I've roughly plotted some values for the sequence 1 over n plus 1. And you might suspect, since the limit of the sequence 1 over n is 0, the limit of this sequence is equal to 1. So the orange dots are the values of the sequence. The blue line is the limit. And again, we can think of any given value of epsilon greater than zero as being a sort of tolerance, as a distance from the limit. So here we've just got an arbitrary line, the limit, plus epsilon, and an arbitrary line, the limit, minus epsilon. And if the sequence does in fact converge to this limit, then for any given value of epsilon, there will exist some point in the sequence such that every following value in the sequence is within a distance of epsilon from the limit. In other words, visually, the values of the sequence fall within this infinite rectangle. And again, if L is the limit of the sequence, this is true for arbitrarily small values of epsilon, because the sequence gets arbitrarily close to its limit. So we could reduce the tolerance. We could take a smaller epsilon value, thus kind of tightening these bars towards the limit. And again, no matter how small of a value of epsilon we choose, the values of the sequence will eventually all fall within that distance epsilon from the limit. I'll mention as well, it's not necessary that every value of the sequence is closer to the limit than its previous value. For example, the values of a sequence could look something like this. Certainly, the sequence is closer to its limit here than it is over here. But overall, it is getting arbitrarily close to its limit. Now, one last thing before we go, let's see the definition in action with a proof. Let's prove that the sequence 1 over n approaches 0, as we suspect, as n approaches infinity. And remember, an inequality like this is really our focus, where a n, the value of our sequence, is 1 over n, and l, the limit, in this case, we think is 0. We want to show that for any given value of epsilon, there exists some number big N, so that if little n is greater than big N, the values of our sequence always fall within epsilon of the limit 0. Like I said earlier, as epsilon gets smaller, our value big N will typically get bigger. We'll need to look further along in the sequence to get sufficiently close to the limit. So what we want to do is solve this inequality for little n to see just how big it has to be. 
Once we do this side work of figuring out how big little n needs to be, the actual proof is a piece of cake. So let's quickly solve this inequality for little n. n is a natural number and thus is positive. So one over n is positive, and of course one over n minus zero is positive. So we can drop the absolute value bars. Additionally, we don't have to write minus zero. So we have that one over n is less than epsilon. Then by multiplying both sides of the inequality by n and dividing both sides by epsilon, we have that n is greater than one over epsilon. Then for our integer big N, we could say that it's just some integer that is greater than one over epsilon. Thus, if we take little n greater than big N, little n of course will also be greater than one over epsilon. And the hope is that we can sort of work backwards to demonstrate this inequality must hold. So all we have to do is start with this expression, the absolute value of our sequence minus the limit. So the absolute value of one over n minus zero. And we're taking little n to be greater than big N, which is an integer greater than one over epsilon. We know, of course, that the absolute value of a positive number minus zero is just equal to that positive number, in this case, one over n. We also know that n is greater than one over epsilon. So if we replace n in this expression by the smaller number, one over epsilon, this will have to be bigger than one over n, since dividing by a smaller number yields a bigger quotient. And then one divided by one over epsilon, what's that? That is epsilon, and that does it. We've just shown, for all values of n greater than one over epsilon, the distance between the values of the sequence and zero are less than epsilon. And that proves the desired result. One over n approaches zero as n approaches infinity. Zero is the limit of this sequence. And this is just a rough sketch of how you prove something like this. I didn't write out the full proof, but I'll point out they will typically start with this phrase, let epsilon be greater than zero. This is just declaring that epsilon is some fixed arbitrary number that's greater than zero. It could be however close to zero you want, but the rest of the proof will demonstrate that after a certain point, the sequence stays within epsilon of its limit. This style of proof might remind you of how we often prove a function is surjective. We start with some scratch work. We start with what we want to be true and see what condition must hold in order for that to be true. Then we use that information of what we think will work to construct a proof. So that's what the limit of a sequence is and a quick look at how we might prove that a sequence has a certain limit. And again, put simply, a sequence has a limit if it gets arbitrarily close to some number. That number is the limit. And we say that a sequence converges to its limit. A sequence with no limit is said to be divergent. So in future lessons, we'll talk more about the properties of convergent sequences and their limits. We'll prove some more limits. We'll talk about divergent sequences, all sorts of fun stuff to come. But I hope this lesson helped you understand what the limit of a sequence is. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. If you appreciate these lessons, I hope you'll consider making a small donation on PayPal or small monthly pledge on Patreon to support the channel. I'll leave links in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest map lessons on the internet. It's not that I'm hateful or filled with regrets. I'm just so damn scared that I'll... Never.